Jason? Yes. Great. Okay, let's go ahead and go right into it. Aloha. Welcome to the 41st annual Hawaii International Film Festival presented by Halekulani and our discussion with uh, Natalia Amalda, Director of Users. We would like to extend our thanks to the Vilcek Foundation who has partnered with us on the New American Perspectives Program. My name is Lingo and I am the Program Associate of the festival. Before we begin, we want to acknowledge the land of Hawaii as an indigenous space where original people are today defined, identified as Kanaka Maoli or Native Hawaiians. I'd like to invite Liz Boylan from the Vilcek Foundation to say a few words on their behalf. Great, thank you, Lee. Uh, we're thrilled to be presenting the New American Perspectives program this year as part of HIF 41. The New American Perspectives program shines a spotlight on foreign born filmmakers celebrating the extraordinary contributions of immigrant artists to contemporary cinema and media in the United States. The program centers the voices of immigrant artists through film screenings, panels, and filmmaker Q and A's like this one with Natalia Almada. Since 2000, the foundation has worked to raise awareness of immigrant contributions in the United States and to foster appreciation of the arts and sciences. We do this through our prizes program and through partnerships like this one with HIF. It's really special for us to be able to share this program in Hawaii where uh, the culture and community has been so shaped by human migration, diversity, and interconnectivity. Uh, without further ado, we're delighted to work with Natalia Amata and to hear from her about her film, Users, which we present as part of New American Perspectives at HIF 41. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Liz, and thank you so much to the Vilcek Foundation. Uh, some housekeeping bits for everyone here. Uh, we want to provide you all with updates uh, for what's happening here at the film festival. So for up-to-date information, you can check out our website at www. Dot hif org. You can see everything in, in addition to our full program, a, our full schedule of films, events, HIF talk story sessions, and Q&A such as this one. We also invite you all to participate in audience award voting. To participate in our Hawaii News Now Audience Award, please cast your vote via ballot either in theaters or online at watch.hif.org or on our apps by voting with the five-star uh, review on a film's page. You can vote for your favorite narrative, documentary, and short film. Mahalo to Hawaii News Now for their support of this. Uh, Natalia, are you ready to begin our Q&A? Yeah. It's great to be here. Well, I only wish I could be there. I know. <laughs> really wonderful to have you. I'm uh, very excited. Um, and you know, for the uninitiated to your work, um, I would love for you to share a bit more about your journey that brought you to make a film like Users. Um, what first inspired this project? Uh, this film in particular is unique for me because it's my first film that I've made in the U.S. All my other films to date have been made in Mexico. Um, but I have a, a partner, a husband, and we have two little kids. And it was very much inspired by um, becoming a mother and kind of the questions that come up around how to raise your kids, you know, really banal things like, do you use disposable diapers or cloth diapers or biodegradable diapers and kind of taking those really simple questions that can be exhausting <laughs> and thinking about them um, more more grandly in a sense like what, what what are the consequences of these little decisions and, and what do they lead to and I think having kids really kind of propelled me into the future mm -hmm. in a lot of ways into thinking about the future very differently than I had before and I think the film has a kind of sci-fi quality that reflects that, you know, the anxiety of a new mother, the kind of thinking about these everyday questions more conceptually, and then thinking about the future differently. Right. Yeah. And that was something that was very apparent, I must say, when watching the film. Uh, I mean, you included your child in the filming as well. And, uh, you know, think very uh, broadly a lot about these kinds of consequences. And, um, you know, was there any concern about how uh, um, how you would uh, how how representing your own thoughts and the thoughts of your family uh, would be carried out as you were doing this exploration through this film? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I just had to answer another question for a written thing that was kind of what were the ethical questions that came up making users, 
And I think that making films in general is really a kind of ethical endeavor. Right. Um, and I feel with this film, the big question was, is it right or wrong to film my children? Mm -hmm. Right. And obviously they're so small that um, they have no say in the matter. On the one hand. Right. I was, I was, I was wondering about the agency as you were kind of staring into your child's eyes, like wondering, you know, what you yeah. think their lives are going to be. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there was a, a kind of two sides to that question. And one is kind of what does the production of the film feel like for them? What does it feel like for them to be in front of a camera? And those questions I felt at ease with because we were a family production. Um, the cinematographer is my brother-in-law. My my husband was always with us, and he did the sound design and the music. So we really were always working kind of small and together. And the kids were integrated into the whole thing. So it wasn't that they were only there when we were shooting them. It's like Uncle Bennett would come to town and we'd all work together and have dinner together. So it felt, I think, for them like a project that they were part of. And they were, even being so young, they were very cognizant of um, that we were making a film and that we were working together. So in terms of kind of the immediate, how does it feel? I think that felt okay. And I think the bigger question sometimes is what will it do to them in the sense to have their image be public and right. Right. I guess I feel like it is such a performative image it's not exactly my kids it's not home movies of my kids mm -hmm. it's really a kind of staged action that they're filming that we filmed of them most of the time so that question of kind of intimacy and doesn't worry me that much and I feel like I could be wrong, and I think only time will tell. Mm -hmm. But I feel like um, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, it's it's funny that you mentioned the question of um, whether, like, I think intimacy and I think like our relationships to on a broader scale are very much uh, interrogated in this film. Um, you know, I noticed when I watched it, there was a strong anxiety in a sense, at least that's how what I felt uh, towards uh, technology and what kind of role that technology is currently playing in our present lives and what might play in the lives of your children and other people in the future. Um, and, you know, I dwell on this question all the time. I think a lot about environmentalism. I think a lot about um, anthropological things. Uh, so um, do you, I have to ask, do you have a prescriptive, agenda when it comes to this like do you see um this as merely being an observer and just uh, just assessing where we are right now as a humanity or do you think that there is something that we should be cautious about when it comes to the way that technology is shaping the our our current interactions um i guess i, I maybe i approach it differently in a sense that uh, for me, like the function of the film is not so much to tell you technology is good or bad or to kind of give you that position on, on be, you know, how you should feel about it exactly as it is to say, we need to ask these questions. And I think for me that the kind of key thing I was thinking about is that our relationship to technology is in fact ambiguous. To technology, which does not mean we don't know what it is. It's that it provides a lot of benefit and betters our lives in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And we can't deny that. So we have to hold that, that at the same time that we can hold the unintended consequences it might have, or the way it may, might change us in, in ways that we don't anticipate or hope. Um, we kind of always have to be living with those two, the positive and the negative. Right. Right. And so all we can do is be cognizant of what it is and think about, you know, if I use this technology, what might it do to me? How might it change me? How might it affect my relationships? And kind of be asking those questions. Mm -hmm. And so the film really wants to engage in that kind of inquiry and in that critical thinking around technology. I think that's fair. And, uh, you know, it's it's something that isn't often done enough. I would say when it comes to there's this there's a lot of interest in uh assessing in some way and making and putting some kind of normative quality to all things 
Um, I wanted to comment that you mentioned earlier that this is the first work that you've made in the United States. Um, and, and unless I'm mistaken, I want to be uh, that this is the first work you've done that is in English or is it uh, fully narrated in English? Is that accurate it, to say? Um, users is mostly in English. It has my children speak in Spanish. Right. So you hear their voices in Spanish sometimes, but it was one of the questions that came up a lot with my narration because the the synth voice, so there's a voice double that's my voice mm -hmm. um, that we built with software that was still in beta, it was still being developed, and it was only being developed for English. So there was this, it will probably get built in many other languages, but in this early beta phase, it was only for, you could only do it in English. <laughs> right, right. So um, there was this challenge in a sense to say like, well, if I want the synthetic voice and my voice to be the same, uh, they need to be in English. Mm -hmm. The minute, you know, if I had done my narration in Spanish, then we would kind of lose that connection or it would just add that layer of, I think it would create a disconnect. Wow. I mean, so my follow-up was qu question was about possible disconnects or things getting lost in translation. And um, I've always found it interesting when people uh, create works in languages that are perhaps uh, secondary in their own upbringing. Um, but it's interesting, you you answered my question in a very unexpected way in that, uh, you know, if the if you did have the potential to do this project in um, your, if, if I can say, your native language of Spanish, um, do you think that certain meanings would have been conveyed a little bit differently than if it was done in English? Um, it's a complicated answer. First is I'm totally bilingual and my mother is American, my father's Mexican. And I, I, since I can remember, I speak both languages. And there's a beautiful quote by Edward Said where he talks about not knowing which of your two languages comes first because they're always uh, commenting on each other and contradicting each other. Mm. And so this relationship to language that is not so absolute where for, for a bicultural bilingual person like myself, it's actually, it's like you're always in the in-between, right? Like there are things I can express better in English and things I can express better in Spanish or things that work in one language that don't in the other. Mm -hmm. and, and language kind of mirrors the cultural differences in many ways. So I think my relationship to language to begin with is complicated and is probably why I make films. Um, and then there's this area of the kind of un, often unexamined privilege in technology so that technology isn't um, neutrally developed that it is developed, it reflects the values of who makes it, right? So if technology is developed, let's just put it in kind of blunt terms, which aren't totally accurate, but if you said, well, oh, all technology is developed by white men, what's gonna reflect the values of those white men, right? It's not neutral just because it's technology, right? right. So when you bring language into that equation and you kind of look at, well, why can't we? Anyways, I don't know if you see where I'm going, but it's. No, I mean, it's in my own, I'm following you and I feel like it's completely relevant to a lot of the things that we are talking about here. Um, Cause uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, you know, interested in how like different cultures interpret right. these kinds of things. And, and and as you put it um, at the same time, your, it, your use of technology in this particular film has in a sense shaped it in a, in a way, yeah. right? Um, in, in a particular way that lends itself to other um, specific interpretations. So that to me is wildly fascinating to say the least. Uh, uh, my last question for you is, um, and, and forgive me if this is a bit of a, going back to a bit of the normative things as you, even though you've established that you are trying to look at things as more of a, um, for comprehension rather than for um, prescription is, based on what you've seen from this film and what you've explored through this, um, how are you feeling now about like what the future holds for you and your family and for everyone? Um, you know, do you think that, you know, if, if people were to take away from your film as um, being potentially optimistic or pessimistic about the future, um, is that aligned with your own intention or do you 
perhaps have another hope for people's takeaways from this? I guess I have a different hope that isn't so kind of good or bad. Okay. And it is one, the hope would be that, well, so once someone told me they watched the film and then they dreamt about it. And that was like the highest compliment for me because <laughs> this is what I wanted, right? That the film would like Absolutely. seep into their being such that they would dream about it. Um, and then I was reading the other day this this uh, book called um, by Serge Denai, Postcards from the Cinema. It's a beautiful book. And he has this line in it where he says, does the film watch you? And I thought this is such a fascinating concept to think that the film, can you make a film that makes the viewer feel watched, mm -hmm. right? So that they turn it on to themselves and ask questions themselves and try to kind of figure out and answer their own position through the film. Mm -hmm. And I think that those, like that's the world I want to be in, in terms of how the film works on someone else. So not so much that they think about either, like what is my view? Am I, am I using screens with my kids and do they have technology or not? Like I may make good or bad decisions, right? Um, and they're kind of not important. But what is important is for everybody to have their own, to make decisions, to make decisions from a place of critical thinking, from an emotional place, thinking about the future, thinking, you know, social responsibility, thinking, com like it's complex how you make decisions. And as I was saying in the beginning, that complexity can be a part of the simplest decision making and the most banal decisions that you make every day. Mm -hmm. um, if you allow it to, they can be thought of in much more complex ways. And I think that that exercise of doing that, which I hope the film invites you to do, is something that can make us much more socially responsible in the world in all regards, right? In terms of how we are with others, how we understand our privilege, how we respect the environment <laughs> in all these ways. And so I think that's the kind of intention behind the filmmaking and what I, what I, the kind of relationship I'd like to have to the viewer. Um, I think that's lovely. Um, I, I, you know, I find that like a lot of the times people look almost narcissistically about how they want to interpret things. And, um, I love what you said about how the work might has its own kind of life and agency in all this and very much can potentially, uh, point things in the other direction. So, that might be an interesting, you know, it almost seems uh, not to like to tell that everybody as they engage with the work, but it's probably something that will happen to them anyway for for the work to, to allow them to look introspectively about their position vis-a-vis -vis that rather than the other way around. Uh, yeah. Well, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. What a privilege. Uh, and Natalia Malda, um, we've come to the end of our Q&A. I want to thank you so much for being part of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I also want to thank everybody for watching this discussion and also a special mahalo to all of our HIF sponsors, our board of directors and our HIF Ohana members as well. Um, if you are able, please consider donating to the Hawaii International Film Festival. Every dollar counts towards keeping HIF uh, at presenting our wonderful content like this and like users uh, in the future. And you can learn more and donate at hif.org slash donate. So uh, thank you, everybody. And please enjoy the rest of the festival. Bye-bye now. Thank you.